The Latin America Report is made possible by MBAF, CPAs and advisors. From the WLRN Newsroom, I'm Tim Padgett. Over the weekend, Haitians again took to the streets of Port-au-Prince to demand the ouster of President Jovenel Moïse. They've been protesting for a year now. They say they're tired of their endless economic crisis. It's hard to find food and fuel or to pay for it if they do find it. They're also fed up with Haiti's nonstop corruption scandals, including a million-dollar road-building scam allegedly involving President Moïse himself. He denies that. That case is just part of a wider $2 billion fraud. Initially, I was of the mindset that Moise being there gave the highest chance for stability. Moise is in bigger trouble now because his critics include Haitians and Haitian expats who until recently supported him staying in power. But now Moise being there actually is a destabilizer. Christerson Jean T was born in Haiti and grew up in Pompano Beach. He returned to Haiti three years ago when Moïse was elected. He runs one of the few business consulting and recruiting firms left there. He even hosts an internet talk show, Haitian Biz News, on his YouTube channel, See Jean T. Jean T spoke to me from Port-au-Prince, and he pointed out how treacherous it is for his employees to get to work now. The streets get filled with violent, burning barricades manned by anti-Moïse protesters. If the demonstrations get really ugly... I do have beds in the office for the safety of my employees so that they potentially sleep here. He keeps the beds there because they keep coming to work even on the most dangerous days. Haiti's unemployment rate is more than 70 percent and inflation is rising. So any paycheck is just too precious to risk losing. We're reaching a tipping point here. If something doesn't change drastically, I'm talking genuine humanitarian crisis. Jean T has decided to stick it out in Haiti, even though he does think Moïse has made the crisis worse by being so disconnected from Haitians. Before he was president, Moïse owned a banana company. Folks like Jean T thought Haitian government could use more of that business background. But Moïse had never held elected office, and it often shows. Across the board, people criticize uh, Moïse for not listening. Tone deaf, similar to Trump in a way, as a businessman who has no political experience, right? Moïse has not appeared in public in almost two months. The last Haitians heard from him was a pre-recorded speech broadcast at 2 a.m. one night last month. His message? I won't resign. And to highlight what they call Moïse's tin ear, Haitians have come up with a derisive nickname for his acting prime minister, Fritz William Michel. Neg (laughs) Cabrit, the goat guy. That's because Michel got a $6 million contract to sell goats to the Haitian government, but he doesn't own any goats. He denies wrongdoing. So I asked Moïse's former communications minister why Moïse has such a big communications problem. Guilherme Delva is now a radio journalist at Radio Caribe in Port-au-Prince. He says Moïse tried to create economic development programs in crucial areas like agriculture. And he argues this crisis isn't all Moïse's fault. This is unfortunately how it is in Haiti. Once you have an election, those who lose the election, they never agree. Delva blames Haiti's zero-sum politics. He says that means the opposition that lost to Moïse three years ago has been out to derail his presidency ever since. You have the opposition saying that they will never sit with him to negotiate anything or to engage in any dialogue. But there are countries where we have wars and many people have been killed, but they still have a way to talk, like even the Americans talking to the Taliban, you know. Still, Delva concedes Moïse hasn't exactly been a model of dialogue himself. Juvenile Moïse lost the public opinion battle, but the problem is that there is not a clear alternative. He's right. There are several opposition leaders in Haiti, but none seem that popular with Haitians right now. And Moïse knows that. So the ugly standoff could last quite a while. Instead of dialogue, we're likely to just hear more of this. I'm Tim Paget in Miami. The Latin America Report is made possible by MBAF, CPAs and advisors.